friends welcome to this saturday late afternoon stream i know some of you guys it's like shabbat's already over um usually i like to go live at two on saturdays but you know just a little sluggish today but we're talking about this um i'm calling it the nineveh window i'm calling it the 40-day Nineveh window. I think it's a very interesting, fascinating development that's happening right before our eyes now that we kind of figured out some of the calendar stuff for this year. Let's take a look at the time between dates here, of course. April 8th, solar eclipse. We've talked about that a ton to what is going to be Pentecost in the evening of May 18th. And then May 19th will be an all-day celebration of Pentecost. But between these dates, you got 40 days, and that is highly, highly interesting from a prophetic point of view. Um, highly interesting. Listen, if you need to check out what, what I'm talking about and why I'm calling this the Nineveh window, really, the last live stream on the channel is going to connect everything. I'm not going to spend time on that today. Um. Let's just talk about this today, okay? Shabbat Shalom. Thank you guys for being here. Um, <laughs> welcome, Cam. Yeah, so let me say this. It's not my last live stream ever today as we jump into this topic. It's just, uh, you know, in fact, thank you for reminding me, Angel. I was going to mention a little bit later. Uh, shalom, guys. I'll just talk about it now. Shalom, guys. Thank you for being here. Um, I think after today, and I'm pretty confident about this. After today, with everything that we've covered here on the channel, and when I say we, myself, guests that I've had on over the past uh, couple of months, three months now, I started going live every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, back in December. Of course, it was late December, so we had January, February. Well, I think it was November. I can't remember, man. I'm losing track of time. I think we were doing lives in November. I just can't put my finger. I know for sure December. But I counted the number of lives. It was somewhere around 35 lives, which is because each one can be more than an hour long. It's like almost 30, uh, 40 hours of content, r roughly, that I've you know put out there in the past couple of months. And I think I've... Get, here's where I'm going. I think I've given you, I've given the community, myself enough information to think about for like the next several months all the way until may especially with today i think after today i will have covered everything that i need to cover so that you are equipped with a clear picture of what to expect what's possible going into god's prophetic time clock this year and that has been a humongous burden on me. Again, I, the YouTube channel is not even monetized. I don't get, you know, a lot of guys put content, content, content because they get paid for the amount of views that they get per video with advertising and all that. I don't have an advertising agreement with YouTube. I don't want them paying me my uh, money. I don't want to be incentivized to make videos in that way. I'm not saying it's evil if you do. It's just I don't want to make my mind think that way. I don't want that to be a thought pattern in my brain. Not only that, there's increased censorship when you shake hands with the devil and say, yes, you know, I want to be under your rules and regulations. And obviously, we all know that the algorithm of the Goo Tube, Google YouTube, is the most powerful algorithm on the on the Internet right now for organic reach and those types of things. So it's been really cool watching a lot of new subscribers coming in. I said this last year when the ch the channel i don't know if you've how long you've been around the channel really started in october of 2022 i didn't really do a whole lot with it until july and august of 2023 and the number of subscribers went from a thousand to like thirty thousand just sat there forever and even with the tremendous amount of lives the effort the research and everything that i've put into this um i'm not complaining i think it's great right love i'm talking to my wife but it's been great. It's been a good ride. But no matter how much I put into it, it's like we've plateaued. And that, I'm totally cool with that. It's just I know when it's time for me to pack up and move on, not to say forever or not to say that I'm done doing what I'm doing. I just need to, I need to withdraw into the wilderness. I think it's about that time. Plus, there's bigger projects that I want to work on. I've got Jeff. We've got a project that we're working on. 
we haven't even touched it because I'm so busy. In fact, I was so busy a week ago, I didn't even have time to do the Monday, Wednesday, Friday lives. And with crop production, livestock duties, everything that I do, I don't have a team. I'm a one man show for the most part, although I do have helpers and it's just too much for one guy. There's not enough. How should I say this without sounding weird or awkward about it? But I'm just going to tell it how it is. There's, there's no financial foundation for this to be sustainable to even hire employees or have at least a full-time secretary or at least a full-time person. Um, I think Overcome Babylon Kingdom Secrets has been very successful, but it's not successful enough to, to, to for me to actually have help. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm constantly like stretched as thin as possible. And so I just realized when it's time to kind of shift priorities. I think anyone who is going to be reached has been reached. And I know it's cool, like continue to spread the word, continue to help other people understand end times from a very specific God-fearing Hebrew lens that obeys and loves every single pen stroke of the Hebrew and uses that as a foundation. Continue to spread that love and that message of the word made flesh, Yeshua, the gospel, the good news, deliverance, casting out demons, all the stuff that we talk about, right? Uh, but, you know, as far as me be, having a su super humongous active role right now, probably for the next couple months at least, uh, you know, it's time for me to kind of pack it up a little bit. Because really the key verse for today as we just dive into this today, this topic of the 40-day Nineveh window, Revelation 22, 11, he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. I think that's where we are right now. Okay. Behold, I am coming quickly. Revelation 22, 12. And my reward is with me to give ev to everyone according to his work. I am the Aleph and the Tav, right? Obviously, we know Yeshua speaking to a Hebrew man. Of course, it was translated and sent out to all those churches in, in Asia Minor, modern day Turkey, etc. But Aleph and Tav is the correct understanding. The Hebrew letters, first and last, the beginning and the end, the first and last. Blessed are those who say his law is done away with. Is that what it says? Blessed are those who say Pentecost is for Jews and Passover is for Jews. And you're so Jewish. You're so weird. Are you a Judaizer? Do you love Judaism? No. Uh, blessed are those who actually fear him enough to actually keep his word. Right. And again, that's why Overcome Babylon has only reached the people that it's reached is because it's not a very popular message. What do you mean I have to do something? I just say, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. I ask him into my heart and I'm once saved, always saved. But whether you look at the life of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Moses, Joseph, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's always a life of walking something out. And that's where we all disagree, right? With the mainstream Western Greco-Judeo-Christian lawless churches they think it's just you know going to church and tithing and saying god bless genocide and god bless 1948 un created israel that's what they think just being blessed and following god's commandments is love your neighbor but we take it a literal step in a or the right direction the only direction and we follow god's law we say i want to keep passover i want to keep pentecost i want to keep day of atonement i want to keep sukkot I want to keep all the things holy that God said keep holy because they're his commandments. They're not Jews commandments as much as they might want to hijack and say that they belong to Judaism. They're not Judaism. It's not Judaism to follow God's law. Oh, by the way, if you actually try again, it's not about perfection and performance and all that nonsense. But if you at least obey and love him enough to actually follow his commandments, then it says that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers, idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. And let me tell you, one of the biggest lies out there of the end times generation is to say that God's law is done away with. I'm a New Testament church. <laughs> and again, it's not a positive. What I talk about is not a popular message. Everybody wants to talk about how they're a New Testament church and how there's a rapture that's going to save them. And everything is just all fine. And I don't have to do anything. You're such a legalist. And you're so evil for telling me I have to keep God's commandments, right? 
And so I know it's a funny way to start today because we're supposed to be talking about the Nineveh window, but I'm telling you, this is the key verse for today. And that's why I'm saying, hey, I'm not doing any more lives, really. Because I think everybody who gets it has gotten it. And those who don't, I until hard times happen, they're not going to wake up yet. And so it's kind of like 2020 and the pandemic all over again until until things really hit the fan. Like nobody's waking up, really, like hardly anybody. Like it, we're we're kind of at that point, right? We don't we're not under lockdowns. Yeah, things look bad. The news tells us to be fearful, and there's a bunch of negative things happening. But people still have food on the table. There's still grocery stores in the supply chain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And people are fat, lazy, and lawless. And until you know, maybe something big happens, like perhaps I don't know, maybe. Although I've shown you mountains of evidence for this maybe when israel finally gets defeated by a coalition called the BRICS 10 maybe then people will actually wake up and take things in the bible a little bit more seriously but we're not there yet okay we're not we're not quite there yet now as a friendly reminder for all those who love practicing a lie you want to say you're a new testament church of gentiles you want you really want to go that route? You really want to say you're part of a New Testament church of Gentiles? Because you're under a new covenant, right? You're under a new covenant. Behold, Jeremiah 31, 31. The days are coming, says Yehovah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Gentiles. Is that what it says? The house of, of lawless Christians. The house of those who don't obey my law. I'm going to make a covenant with them. I love them so much. Is that what it says? But man, I swear that's what every church teaches. 99% of these godforsaken churches out there teach this garbage as if it's in Jeremiah 31. But the only new covenant that Christ ever made at the Last Supper, when he said, take the cup of the new covenant, this is my blood, was with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So who, which house are you a part of? And I've told you a million times, America is that house of Israel big time. Because all those 10 tribes have been scattered to Europe and to Nova Scotia. I'm, I'm sorry, to Scotia, which then became Nova Scotia and British Columbia. But all of the UK, everybody migrated over to the quote unquote new world. And the house of Israel predominantly is the United States. That's why, again, you, look, you open up your Bible and you look at Ephraim and you look at Israel. Yeah, they're a bunch of stiff neck that say that God's law is done away with. The donkey knows his master, but my people do not know the master right? God says this many times. They don't know who their master is. They, th they think they're just a bunch of secular, pagan, lawless people. Oh, and if you call upon the name of Christ, you can do whatever you want. Just love your neighbor. And it's just not the way this thing works. And so the covenant, he said, I'm going to put my law in your heart. Well, guess what that means? Torah, instructions. It means Genesis, Deuteronomy, all the Proverbs, Psalms, writings, everything. And that, my friends, is where we are right now with this Nineveh window I'm seeing here. April 8th to May 18th, I, I believe, just like it says in the book of Jonah, chapter 2, or excuse me, it's chapter 3, yet 40 days in Nineveh shall be overthrown, it says in Jonah, chapter 3, verse 4. I think that's where we are right now, because these people just don't care. <laughs> From, like, oh my goodness, 40 days in Nineveh shall be overthrown. I think that's what we're seeing. Endless war, endless war, genocide, genocide. Bless those Jews. Bless. I mean, that that's all I hear on social media all day long from people who should know better. And I'm sick of it. And so is God. And he, we have, I think, again, this is just my interpretation, but it looks like you might have 40 days from April 8th to May 18th and it's game over. The whore's going down. That great prostitute HQ'd in Jerusalem's going down. That rules over our people with a bunch of lies, endless war, and printing money, and destroying us. Oh, one of the ways they've been destroying us with the mass migration. This is from Zero Hedge. Former Panama border chief, the UN is behind the chaos at U.S.-Mexico border. Oh, by the way, it talks about a Hebrew uh, uh, organization receiving $11 million. It's called Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. Uh, so they're connected to the border, of course. We already know that. We didn't need this article to tell us. You've got the fact that one of the main things I'm bringing up this article 
is because I've already covered the Darien Gap and how, yeah, the solar eclipse has already told us that the Darien Gap is part of uh, God's solar eclipse prophecy to America. And in 2023, 500,000 migrants traveled through the dense jungle known as the Darien Gap from Colombia into Panama. And the reason they're doing this is because they're able to go to countries like Suriname and Ecuador because those countries don't require a visa to enter. So you have communist CCP, Venezuelans, all kinds of people. Well, you, you got people from all over the world, right? You have radical Islamic jihadists, sleeper cells coming in. You got all these people coming in to specifically Ecuador. Quito is a major hub and they're coming right through the border. And so that's one thing that's been happening lately to the United States. Um, and just so you know, there's more articles about this from a Venezuelan's point of view. Uh, criminal migrants are getting to the United States through very specific and coordinated efforts. I've talked about this before on Overcome Bam One. I've talked about things like this, but here's a New York Post article that just came out recently. There's a deadly alliance brewing between MS-13 and bloodthirsty Venezuelan Tren de Aragua gang behind NYC cell phone robberies, FBI fears. So you have MS-13 teaming up with gangs from Venezuela. They're basically, I mean, because of, right, defund the police, 2020, that all happened, the summer of rage, 2021, 2020, and all that. You have defund the police, and now you have gangs running New York City, and it's only going to get worse, right? Uh, and then you have illegal migrants coming in. This is from the Washington Times. Illegal mi immigrants bring gang ties and violent crime to Sanctuary City, New York. There's more articles about this. And the reason I bring all this up is because I had actually warned this community again i know some of you are new here but i warned this community last year in 2023 to fast for the day of atonement this is your last chance i said uh prophecy fulfilled 2023 joel fast before the locusts come and was that dead on the money or what i mean i'm look i'm not oh my gosh i really don't want to sound prideful i hate that i see other channels do it like canadian prepper i don't want to be prideful it was it was accurate why why was it accurate that i i successfully predicted that the joel fast uh, which is actually Joel chapter two. You can look it up. You can go watch that it's one, on the live stream tab. But how was I able to predict that? That yes, this is the last fast before the locusts come. And now the locusts are here like insane and in insane numbers. From October, I told you from October to May is peak mi migration season because the Darien Gap is in the dry season. So all those heavy, wet rains are not going to interfere with the ability of illegals to come through. And so right now we're still in peak season. I've talked about this before, um, but the reason that I was able to more or less just kind of predict that, although honestly, anybody could have, if you just understood uh, some basics of Bible prophecy, specifically the sabbatical cycles, so every seven years, there's a year of land rest. And because we know that from God's law, Leviticus 25, we're able to go in, we're able to actually understand so much of the Bible, including but not limited to all the 49 year cycles of history. And we are living right now in the 70th week of Daniel. I told you that from the middle of the week to 2023, there is a count of 1,290 days that has now been fulfilled. And I told you the locusts are coming from uh, the smoke of a bottomless pit event that's already happening. And really, the Great Tribulation can happen anytime right now. And that's why, again, people ask me, why are you so fear mongering? I'm not, first of all, it's not fear mongering. It's just proclaiming the truth. It's just people are projecting their own insecurities onto me, saying I'm fear mongering. And they do, they'll do the same to you if you uh, preach and testify the truth. They'll call you a fear monger. It's not fear mongering. People are just projecting their insecurity of being fearful onto you, the messenger, because they're afraid and they're not ready because their hearts are not right with God. So I'm not fear mongering. I just tell the truth. And the truth is the Great Tribulation can happen at any time right now. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, I've covered that a million times, so I'm not going to talk about that today. But the Nineveh window, it's looking like something big's happening on May of this year. And what I will say is, guys, watch and pray that always watch and pray that you might be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. The locusts are already here. Gangs are taking over the major cities, especially the sanctuary cities. Uh, gangs are already taking them over. Police have been defunded. Uh, through race baiting and all a bunch of foolish nonsense. That was all just a front. That was all smoke and mirrors. The real agenda was to collapse the country. And now gangs are running major cities now. 
where police departments are totally limited, not manned. They don't, they don't have the law on their side, right? If the cops dare to do anything righteous, they might be labeled racist. And so we have that whole problem. The locusts are here. And I'm telling you that it looks like we have a 40 day window. And sometime, this is just my speculation, sometime after May 18th Passover, we're looking at, I don't know, cyber attack, nuclear war. You tell me. It's anybody's guess. But I do think that Iran is going to do some kind of a strike on Israel to set things off. I showed you very much a lot of evidence for that. And I know, but I know what you might be thinking, right? If, if you tuned into the very last live stream of the sign of Jonah, you might be thinking, okay, dude, Abraham, you're a hypocrite. Why would you talk about how the rapture is fake and all that? And then show me this verse from Luke 21, 36 that says, pray that you're counted worthy to escape. You're such a hypocrite. I know there's always those keyboard warriors that'll come in and call me all kinds of names and stuff like that. You're a hypocrite, you know, yada, 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 because you said that you shouldn't be worried about raptures, just be ready for suffering. And yes, that is true. Uh, what it says in Luke 21, 36 is watch and pray. That's totally different of a heart attitude and a heart posture than what we see in Amos 9, uh, uh, 10, which is what I told you is sinful. The sinful attitude says the calamity shall not overtake or confront us. Do you see the difference in the heart posture? Those people of Amos 9, 10, which is basically 98%, 99% of Protestant Christianity, they're sinners because they're like, oh, I said the Jesus prayer. I tithe to my 501c3 politically correct church. And so I, I have favor with Jesus. And so they expect deliverance. They expect to be blessed rather than the person who has his head down beating his chest saying, man, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm beating my chest. I'm not worthy. Lord, if it's your will, could you could you count me worthy to escape? But if not, your will be done because you don't want to be like these sinners constantly saying how righteous they are. Some guy on the last live stream is so funny. My wife and I, I was like, did that really happen? We had to make some jokes about it. Some guy shows up and he's like, I'm going to take your crowns, Abraham, in heaven because you don't believe in the rapture. It was like the most prideful, like demon possessed like totally manifesting like 500 demons telling somebody like me who's telling you to be okay with suffering that they're going to take my crowns because I don't believe in a rapture. Like that's how twisted this Protestant Western Christian system is. This is the type of abominable mentalities of these creatures that have been birthed from this whole system of religion that they think, and they're so entitled, they think that the calamity shall never overtake them. That's, see, that's the difference between Amos 9.10 and Luke 21.36. It's a heart posture of humility. It's asking and praying and always seeking Yeshua, not expecting. This is the difference, fundamental difference. Okay, now I, I want to point your attention to overcomebabylon.com. 5860. Okay, this is the year that we're entering. If you want to know why I come up with that date for 5860, it's different than the Jews because I don't follow Judaism or the Talmud or any of that nonsense. Man-made traditions have no place in Overcome Babylon. You can learn all about it. Bible Prophecy Secrets. There's a link in the description below to check that out. Uh, so again, I, I, I told you like a week or two ago, I was 99% sure that... Um, we are going to have a 13 month year this this year so 58 59 and um if you guys are doing your diligence like we all should if you again i'm going to scroll down to it sorry if it hurts your eyes but i added a couple of updates in here one of them is right here okay i'm highlighting it becca bitterman just posted a video uh on february 20 20th so today is the 24th so february 20th she said hey look yeah, I'm finding barley, but the heads of the grain are all watery. They're wet. I'm crushing them in my hand and they're so wet. They're not ready. They're not going to there's she said it's basically impossible for the barley to experience enough heat and dryness in order to be ready in time for what we know to be as wave sheaf day, which again, if you look at all my dates, that's why I really like what I put together here. Wave sheaf day is supposed to be March 2nd to March 3rd. She said there's no way that the barley is going to be ready by then. She has not found barley that can qualify for the Leviticus 2.14 offering as is required for a first fruits offering. Therefore, I am very comfortable 
saying, guys, it's a 13th month year, 13 month year right now, 5859, which means that the first new moon is going to be March 11th, which means that Passover is going to be on March uh, 24th to the 25th. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 24th to the 25th. That's Lord's Supper. March 24th to 25th, you got Passover, and then Wave Sheaf Day, March 30th to March 31st. That's plenty of time for the barley to develop, especially with what Becca has already shown us. And then, um, finally, we get to, so from Wave Sheaf Day, this is what a lot of people don't realize. Go look at, everything I'm telling you is not new. Go to Leviticus chapter 23. It'll tell you how to do all of this step by step. All I do is give, summarize it and give you dates in the Gregorian to contextualize it for you. But from wave sheaf day of the barley to Pentecost, you count 50 days. Okay, from wave sheaf day to Pentecost, you count 50 days. Let me show it to you graphically. This is what it looks like. So we have seven first fruits are in God's calendar, otherwise known as the Torah calendar. Seven first fruits of the Torah calendar. Um, this is from Deuteronomy chapter eight. You can read about this. There are seven first fruits. He's I'm bringing you into a land of barley, wheat, vine, figs, grapes. Okay, you, you guys know where to find that. And so, from the barley to the wheat, you have forty nine days. They're both first fruits offerings of the ground, of the fruit of the ground. That's all that is. And so you you always count from Sunday Wave Sheaf Day to Sunday Pentecost. There's always 50 days. This year, it's going to be, again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, May 18th to May 19th. That's Pentecost. And again, what's very fascinating to me as a Bible prophecy student and just a Bible student in general is that from the eclipse to Pentecost is 40 days. What's interesting about this time period as well is um, you guys know that after 1948, UN created man-made Israel became a nation on the world stage. Um, they declared independence on May 14th, right? 1948. So they just celebrated their 75th uh, anniversary of being a country with the Israeli Declaration of Independence last year, 75 years in 2023. It just so happens that the uh, this time period, what I'm calling the Nineveh window, okay, I'm just calling it that. Prob it definitely looks like that's what it's going to be the very last, very last chance to repent and be considered a first fruit. We're going to talk about that in a moment, but it looks to me like it's very suspicious and very interesting that in this time period, Israel will be celebrating its seventy sixth. Uh, anniversary of being a uh, country. And so that's something to be, that could be a flashpoint, just like it was during the war of 1948. So another, yet another flashpoint going into the future. But remember what Jonah said, right? He said, 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. We, we talked about this many times. The United States is the financier of Israel. We know, again, guys, look, I'm going to tell it to you straight right here. I won't talk about it much more. Go to the Telegram. There's a link down below. Go to the Telegram. I posted a documentary in there. I posted another video after that. Those are critical for your understanding of who Mystery Babylon is in the end times. Go watch those documentaries, please. In the Telegram down below. Uh, go check them out. I posted them a couple days ago, and I just posted another one today. You can put those pieces together, and you'll be, you'll be very, very crystal clear on on end times and who Mystery Babylon is, not that it hasn't been clear already. Yeshua told us in, in Revelation 11, 8, it's the city where he was crucified. Uh, Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon. Now, Matthew 13, here's, here's, I don't even know where to start with this one, but this is really what I was going to focus on a lot today. What I'm going to start talking about next is, like I, like I already showed you, first fruits. More specifically, though, I'm going to talk about what I dedicated a whole entire chapter to in Bible Prophecy Secrets is chapter 11. Do you remember? Chapter 11 of Bible Prophecy Secrets. I dedicated a whole entire chapter to what I'm about to talk about. So I'm not going to go over all of it in granular detail. Just remember what I said. Hey, we're being told that God is going to select first fruits at the end of the age. 
If you don't believe me, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it says that in Revelation 14, 1, that Yeshua was standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. That's why I chose to wear today's uh, the beanie during today's live. It'd be something like this, right? So just picture that with me. You have 144,000 people with God's name on their forehead. And what it says about these people, in addition to a lot of descriptions, is that they were redeemed from the earth. And it says in Revelation 14, 4, that they are first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Again, if that if you want more clarity on why these are not young virgin men because they have never had sex, that's totally foolish. That's trying to push a literal interpretation where it doesn't even fit at all. Because anyway, I'm not even going to get into it. First fruits, okay? There's a selection of first fruits. It's 144,000 of them. And what we know is that these first fruits can be selected and they're going to be picked sometime at the end of the age. Let's talk about this because I haven't talked about it for a very long time because I haven't really had to, but let's take a look at it. Matthew 13, 36, then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said to them, he who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. The reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The son of man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend those who practice Torahlessness, lawlessness, God's laws done away withness, that that whole idea, basically 99% of modern churches, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of that, but the point is this. Um, he when he first shares the parable, which I'm not going to read, it's Matthew chapter 13, verses 24, all the way to 2030. But basically, a man sows good seed in a field. An enemy comes to sow tares. You cannot tell the difference between the two until the time of harvest is what it says in Matthew 13, 30. Until the time of harvest. And Yeshua tells you and tells me, point blank, the time of the harvest literally is the end of the age. He literally tells us this. Uh, I don't know. How come I'm not seeing it? It's right here. Um, field is the world. Yeah, end of the age. Right here. Matthew 13, 39. The harvest is the end of the age. Well, come on now. You guys know exactly where I'm going with this. I've shown you we're here. How, how much longer do we have? These are absolutely 100% prophecies that we must be paying attention to because the 70th week of Daniel is already here. We're living through it right now. And so the only question is, when are the first fruits selected? Because we know by the year 2044, 2045, the entire harvest is going to be harvested. But there is a first fruits. First. First. Something happens first. Oh, that makes sense, right? I, I, hear, I hear the mind-blowing moment in the background. I don't, I'm not going to do the sound effect this time. I'll spare you. But there is first fruits. They're first fruits. They're redeemed first fruits, 144,000. So I've been telling you, one of the things that should be on your radar is the fact that judgment cannot happen in a massive great tribulation type of way until the 144,000 are sealed with the name of God on their forehead. Revelation chapter 7. The, the four angels hold the four winds of earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, the sea, or in any tree. And there's an angel in, in chapter in verse 2 of chapter 7 that says, um, Do not harm the earth or the trees till we have see, the sea, the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. And we know exactly what this is talking about, the first fruits of Revelation chapter 14. So here's where I'm going with this. Um, now that I brought you up to speed. I said in Bible Prophecy Secrets, you got to watch out for possibly Pentecost, also known as Shavuot in the Hebrew. That 
2023, it still felt a little early though. And I was like, ah, I just don't, I think it's too soon. I've told you that. And I said it in the book. I'm like, I don't, th I think it's more likely that it's Yom Kippur for, for the selection of the 144,000. I gave you all the evidence to support that conclusion, but as God would have it, it turns out that there is also a third outcome and it's Pentecost 2024. Now, how much more plausible is it now that we're seeing everything that we're seeing? Literally, Vladimir Putin jumping inside of the cockpit of a Russian nuclear bomber having a good old time. And it's everything, the drums of war beating. And, and I feel like there's a climax moment coming and I cannot help but notice, huh? There's a 40-day window from April 8th to May 18th. Could this be the day that Yeshua finally picks all of his first fruits to escape judgment? Now, please, my goodness, please stop the nonsense. Do not be a sinner of Amos chapter 9, verse 10, which is like 99% of people that are out there. Please do not do this. All I'm showing you is what is possible because... Quite frankly, it's my job. I've never seen anybody else connect these dots because they just don't know. I mean, they just, I'm sure they would if they knew, but this is not on anybody's radar because they're just not paying attention to the agricultural cycles of God's time clock, the language of the Hebrew. They're not paying attention. So I think this channel is the only one that's ever really covered this at all. The fact that there's a first fruits harvest before the Great Tribulation. And let me just say this, because anyone who observed Yom Kippur with us last year, I mean, I showed you this graphic, right, from the channel here. We had a blast. We casted out demons. We experienced a very just monumental time with God during the Day of Atonement last year. I'll never forget it. A lot of people received words. People were extremely blessed participating in Day of Atonement. I still think something happened here. I don't know what necessarily. And I've told you that many times. I, all I do is proclaim these things. I don't necessarily understand these things, right? <laughs> what I'm saying is, and what, what appears to be very likely is that Yeshua will finalize his selection of first fruits, sealed on their foreheads, protected from the coming judgment by the time May 18th, comes around because it's so crystal clear. America has the April 8th eclipse going through all of the, basically all the Nineveh cities of the United States. All the eclipses from 2017 to 2024 have told us a massive prophetic story that America is Israel. America has the most lost tribes blood of any country right now on the face of the earth. It has the most Prominence in end times prophecy. It is the tribe of Manasseh. It is the 13th tribe. It is Joseph. It is the house of Israel. And we are about to see the most insane prophetic unraveling that I think we've ever seen in our entire lives and will ever see again, minus the return of Yeshua to the earth, because this country and all Western countries are going to be judged in a way that Yeshua said, there's not going to be anything like it, nor ever shall there ever be anything like this ever again. And rather than show you those verses that we've already talked about many times from Luke 21, Matthew 24, Mark 13, I want to remind you of, a, of another verse. And I'll end here today, but the faithful, the Church of Philadelphia, write these things, says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts. And shuts and no one opens. I know your work. See, I have set before you an open door. No one can shut it. For you have had power of the Holy Spirit. That's what that really means. Kept my word. That means to actually practice Torah, to actually keep Sabbaths, keep the dietary laws, obey, walk in obedience as best you can, have not denied Yeshua's name. So we're not Jews. We're not Judaizers. We actually do call upon the name of Jesus. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them become worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. 
You want to know who the synagogue of Satan is? Go to my Telegram, Overcome Babylon Telegram ASAP and watch those documentaries before the next cyber attack happens. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Okay? That's never happened before, my brothers and sisters. Never, ever, ever, ever. The whole world was not tested in the days of uh, the church of literal Philadelphia over there in Asia Minor. This is for us. This is for us. This is an end times prophecy. Become a member of the church of Philadelphia. Become a member of the church of Philadelphia. Pray that you're counted worthy. Again, please don't get carried away. Pray that you're counted worthy, but please don't get carried away. Don't become prideful. Don't look down on other people, and you will do well. Remain humble. The moment we get prideful about anything, anything, the moment we get prideful is the moment we are in danger, grave danger. And that's all I have. So thank you guys for being here. 40-day window from April 8th to May 18th. I think it was something worth talking about, worth covering. But really, from this point onward, I've given you the end of February, uh, March. I've given you a big analysis on March. I've given you a big analysis on April. And now, all the way until May, I've given you so much analysis. I think it's time for me to withdraw into the wilderness, my friends. I have a lot of work to do around here. Life is only getting busier for me now that the snow is melting. So... I'll still be around, guys. Trust me. If anything really major needs to be covered, I'll, I'll be here with you guys in community covering things as needed. But I think the Monday, Wednesday lives, Monday, Wednesday, Friday lives are a thing of history for now. Like I said, uh, maybe maybe we'll restart those. But I think uh, I think we have a lot to to focus on already. OK, so and I'm not one of those channels like, again. You can tell who's motivated for the wrong reasons. I'm not one of those channels that gets paid to do videos. Okay? I just don't get paid. I don't make any money. Uh, Rumble gives me like a couple of bucks. Okay, <laughs> Rumble. <laughs> I didn't even realize they were doing it. And I got a notification in my email. There's like, hey, your Rumble earnings have posted. I'm like, huh? What's this? Anyway, so I'm not motivated to get clicks and clickbait and views and all that nonsense. So what I've given you is from the heart, seriously. I mean that. I know you know some of you won't believe it, but what I've given you the past few months is really from the heart. It always has been from the heart, but especially all this labor of love, all the research is really it's 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 some of the research has been really intense. Not all of it. So with that said, um I think I've covered everything I need to cover. So um Thank you guys for being here. I'm just checking comments real quick and I'm signing off for uh, today. Again, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat's already ending here. So I'm assuming it's ending. It's pretty much ended for everybody except for the Pacific time zones. Um, yes, indeed. I, <laughs> I appreciate you guys being here. Blessings. Shalom to all you guys. Um, and again, you know, check out Bible Prophecy Secrets Chapter 11. Read it with that fresh lens of understanding that it looks like we have an end of a sign. A uh, 40 day window to repent as a nation. It's probably not going to happen in a very significant way or at all, uh, judging from the spiritual condition of our country. Um, but that's where we are. So by May 18th, if nothing major happens, it'll be a miracle. It, by, by May 19th onward, if, if absolutely nothing happens by, by end of May, let's just say end of May, if nothing happens end of May, <laughs> I will be beside myself. I won't even know what to think. I'll be like, oh, wow, well, I got to. <laughs> I got to look at, you know, what's next. Let's keep, let's keep searching. Let's keep worshiping God and living our lives and for his honor and glory. But man, I'll be shocked if nothing happens by, by end of May going into June. I'll be so shocked. Um, all right, guys. Thank you. Like I said, I'll be here, but I'm retreating for now. Uh, I think it's necessary. Just, you know, hopefully I can set a good example for you as well. Whatever you might be doing, there's seasons in our lives and we have to adjust accordingly. Yeah, calm before the storm. 100% agree with that. Me, we. Um, yes, indeed. As, oh, and by the way, as far as um, as far as feast days and stuff like that, I'm not really going to be doing any Zoom meetings. I did a lot of Zoom meetings and stuff like that last year. I really don't want to do anything like that because I actually just want to. 
I don't know, privately enjoy those feast days this year. But if something changes with that, I'll let you guys know. If you want to do a Zoom meeting or something like that, I'll let you know. But for now, I'm just kind of like shutting down a little bit. It's just been a hard road, long road. Uh, thank you. <laughs> True Diligence. I love the name. True Diligence. Thank you, brother, for all the hard work you've done over the period. Love and blessings. It's been a hard road, guys. Yeah. Um, so uh, you guys know what to do. Uh, again, I'll just I said I was going to end with that last thought, but one one last thing. I read it at the very beginning today. Just Revelation 22, guys. Uh, Revelation 22. Just remember, um, you know, he who is unjust, let me unjust still. You know, remember Revelation 22, 11. That's really where we are in history. Most people don't care to wake up. It's just, it's just the way it is. Most people just don't care enough yet. Uh, so that's kind of what we're dealing with. Those who are holy, let them be holy. Those who are filthy, they're just going to stay filthy until May 18th. And we'll see what happens after that. May 18th, May 19th. Again, Pentecost is going to be the day of May 19th, although it starts in sundown at May 18th. So don't let that confuse you. Hopefully it didn't. But May 19th really is Pentecost day. But uh, it starts this sundown to sundown. So, all right, my friends, blessings to you. Shalom. And uh, I, uh, I'll be around. I'll be around. Okay. God bless you. Thank you for being here.